Hey, it's Katie, and welcome back to my booktube channel. Today, I will be doing a review of A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. And the first part of this video will be spoiler free, so any of you guys can watch it. And then the second half will be with spoilers in it, but I'll make sure to put a warning up on the screen and to tell you guys so I don't ruin anything for you because somehow even though this book has been out for a while i managed to avoid the spoilers until just now reading it and i'm not quite sure how because so many people talked about it but i was able to do that so i want to make sure that i don't spoil anything for you guys either the whole reason i jumped into this now after waiting for so long is because the next book in the series is coming out i think within a few days of when this video will come out i don't know it's very soon and i realized that there's a lot to read and i really want to catch up before people start talking about the next book and potentially ruin the series for me so i wanted to jump into it right away and also i got this collector's edition of the book for christmas so that was another reason i wanted to get into it because this is gorgeous i love this right here and then it's so fun that it has this little ribbon that you use to pull out the book. And then we have this on the front. Hopefully you guys can see how cool it looks. But I'm assuming this is our main character, Feyre? Feyre. That's how I think her name's pronounced. It'd be really embarrassing if I pronounce any of these names incorrectly because I'm going to be saying them a lot during this video. Here is the back of it. It has a wolf on it. I decided to go ahead and buy a different version of it just because I don't want to ruin my collector's edition. And I also went ahead and just bought the rest of the series that's out because I wanted to be able to binge the series. So right after I finish this video for you guys, I will be picking up the second book. Before we get into the synopsis for A Court of Thorns and Roses, since I do plan on reading the rest of the series, I am very curious to know if you guys would like me to do full reviews for each of the books. I would probably combine the last two into one review just because the last one is so short. But would you guys be interested in a video for each book? Let me know. All I knew before jumping into this because I literally avoided any information about it possible. All I knew was our main character's name, Feyre, and I knew that her ship was with Rhysand. I cannot say his name because it, when I was reading it, I thought it was Rhysand. And then in this collector's edition, they have pronunciations and it said you pronounce it as like Reese, Rhysand. So that's gonna be something hard for me to remember throughout this video since I pronounced it incorrectly in my head while I was reading the whole book. But anyway, all I knew were their names and the fact that people shipped them together and I knew that there were some people in here that had wings because I saw some fan art and that's really all I knew and I don't know how I avoided all of that. Even in the synopsis, it says more than that, but I guess I just never read the synopsis. I just heard all of the hype for it and that was enough for me to want to read it. But basically, A Court of Thorns and Roses follows Feyre, who in order to take care of her family has to go hunting in the woods. And when she's out there the one day, she sees a deer she wants to kill, but there's also a wolf, so she ends up killing both of them. And eventually this monstrous creature comes to her home demanding retribution for the wolf that was killed. And so she gets taken away to this magical land that she's kind of been told her whole life to not go near. And she learns that this magical land is filled with all these immortal fairies. Well, I guess she didn't learn that. She already kind of knew that, but she learned that he is one of them. And as she gets used to her new home, she also starts to connect with her captor and some of the other people there and learn about their world and that there is this darkness that is spreading throughout their lands, basically, and that she's going to kind of need to help put a stop to this or else her captor and the whole world itself, including where her family is, could be in danger. Hopefully that synopsis made sense to you guys, but... Basically, there was so much hype around this book and the series in general, and it honestly made me very nervous to pick it up, which is why it took me so long to start it after getting that for Christmas. But 
finally, since the next book is coming out, I decided that I should just give it a shot. And I'm so glad I did because it definitely lives up to the hype. And I'm so glad that it did. This book was captivating from the first page. I think I read every single word in this book, which usually never happens. Usually I skim through certain parts, but I was so into this book and into this world. It was so vivid and the scenes played out in my head like so well. It was literally like I was watching a movie and usually when I read, obviously I can like picture the scenes and the characters and all of that. That's usually something that happens for me, but never this vivid and that was really cool. I feel like I was so deep in this world that if somebody would talk to me, it took me a while to kind of snap out of it, which was so fun to kind of experience. And I loved that on top of the complex world, we had so many complex characters, like all of our main characters, obviously. We had Feyre, Tamlin, Resand, all these other characters that are in the forefront of this book are so complex and it was just so amazing to meet all of them and I feel like the pace of us learning about each character was amazing, especially since this is the first book in a series. I feel like the pacing of this book was great in general. It did have kind of a slow start, but because I was so interested in what was happening and I'd heard such great things about it, I was really excited to keep reading and I, it definitely picked up. It got really fast toward the end, but I feel like the pacing was really great considering it's book one in a series and the way you get introduced to these characters, you have time to learn who they are and it's not like you're thrust into a situation where you're supposed to know them right away, if that makes sense. I feel like some books move really quick throughout the whole book and sometimes that's a little off-putting for me, so I really enjoyed the pacing. One of the things I constantly thought about while I was reading this was how I wish there was like a guidebook or kind of like a grimoire handbook kind of thing. I don't know what to call it, but I wish there was a book that had all of the maps from this world. And I know that there are maps in the books, so that does help, but I wish it would have like the maps and some art for what certain characters looked like but most importantly, I want it to have pictures and like pages dedicated toward the different creatures that you meet in this book because there's like five or six different creatures I can think of that you meet in this world and I would love to know what they look like. It'd be cool to have, you know, like a picture of them and like some cool facts or like important things to know about them. I feel like that'd be really fun. And after this series is complete, I feel like it'd be really cool to just come out with one big book like that for the whole series. Overall, I gave this book four out of five stars. I loved it so much, but I know that the series probably gets a lot better from here. And I couldn't really give it five stars because I feel like there's a lot of other books that I love just a tiny bit more, but I can already tell that this series is going to be one of my all time favorites. So don't let the four stars be discouraging because it's definitely worth the read, but that is the end of the spoiler free portion. So if you've read it or if you don't really care about spoilers, feel free to continue. But now we are heading into the portion to the portion with spoilers. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is kind of like the beginning of this story because I feel like it was really cool to just jump into Feyre trying to hunt for her family and I feel like it really gave you some good background knowledge right away about what her role is in her family which it made me so angry to see that her family did not appreciate her at all like they literally would starve if she didn't go out into the woods and hunt for them all the time and like risk her life but they just acted like it was totally normal and anytime they asked Anytime she asked them to help her, they acted like it was the worst thing in the whole world. And I really disliked her family for that, which I'm sure many of you can agree. Especially Nesta. At the beginning, she was the worst. I did not like how mean she was to Feyre. It was horrible. And then obviously, like, we get to the point where she kind of steps up to protect her family when Tamlin comes to take Feyre which that was kind of nice that she wanted to protect her sister. And then later on, 
her and Feyre end up talking and Feyre trusts Nesta to kind of take care of the family and so that was really cool to see her grow and I think that one of these other books maybe a couple I don't know I think we see Nesta again in some of these other books so I'm excited to see how she develops and to see more of her character something I really enjoyed about Feyre as a character is that when she's kind of pitched to us at the beginning and introduced there's nothing like super special about her like it's not like she's the typical trope where she's like an outsider or whatever because she still has an important role of taking care of her family and she's obviously strong enough to go out there and hunt for them but it's not like she has this magical ability that comes out of nowhere or that she's obviously like the chosen one or anything like that she's just somebody that goes out there to provide for her family because that's what she feels is necessary and even though they kind of don't deserve her help she is very loyal to them and a good person and so I liked that you got to see those characteristics of her and it wasn't overshadowed by like some special ability that she has that other people don't. I thought that was a really cool way to kind of meet her and then obviously as the story goes on she develops more and more as a character and she ends up being super strong and badass and even though there's certain battles that she goes into or fights that she has that she's kind of the underdog and she's not totally sure if she can win. I love that she always fights. She's never going to go down without a fight and I really, really liked that about her. Also, I had no idea that this was a retelling, especially a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I feel like usually I can tell when that's a part of it. I feel like even from the synopsis, I should have noticed, but I didn't even realize that until a very good amount of the way through the book, which is kind of sad, kind of embarrassing, but that's okay. But I thought it was a really cool spin on it because the whole mask thing, I feel like that was really cool. It's not like they all transformed into different creatures or anything, but still the mask was a good symbol of that. And also Tamlin obviously can shapeshift, so the fact that he shapeshifts into the beast, I think is a pretty clever way to do that too. So it's definitely a very cool spin on the Beauty and the Beast retelling. And I like that it wasn't super cliche or even super obvious, at least to me. All these thoughts are kind of jumbled up, but also I wanted to say that I hope we kind of see some more from the other courts in the book because I feel like that would be really cool. There's so many of them and you get little tidbits about each one here and there, but it would be really cool to kind of experience them a little bit more. Obviously, we're going to experience the one that Reese is from, so I'm excited for that but hopefully we get to jump around a little bit more because I love the whole idea of that. Also, I don't know if this was obvious to a lot of people, but from the first scenario where we meet Reese, I feel like I knew that he would come back into play later, even before we even knew his name. But that first scenario where there was that festival thing that Feyre wasn't supposed to go to and she got cornered by those creatures and he came to save her. I feel like from that moment on, I knew he was gonna come back into play in the story and I don't know if that was obvious but it made me really happy when that was the same person that came back later and I just wanted to share because I love noticing little things like that or feeling like a character is going to come back later and just kind of waiting for that moment and also I'm definitely shipping Reese and Feyre because I think they are so cute together. I know there's not like some really adorable scenes but I love the whole enemies to lovers and I love just the little tidbits you see that he kind of cares about her in some way throughout the end of the book. So that's really fun. I'll get into that in a second, but they're basically end game. I've seen like reviews from other people where they ship her with Tamlin and maybe it was because I knew that that wasn't the person that everybody was shipping Feyre with but I never really shipped them together. I like him as a character. I think he is a decent love interest but I definitely was waiting for something with a little more passion to it and a little more fire so I'm excited to see what happens with the two of them in the next book. I loved all of the moments where we got to see Reese kind of protect Feyre in his own way or kind of root for her and believe in her. I feel like that's really cool. We have even some like smaller moments where I guess you wouldn't necessarily think that it's him protecting her, but with her kissing Tamlin at, you know, in the underground mountain thing. Sorry, I don't remember what these things are called, but even her kissing Tamlin and 
Reese realizing that everybody would know that that's what was happening and so to protect her he kissed her and made it seem like they were the ones making out so nobody would question it. That was really sweet to kind of protect her in that and the moment where she was told that she had to do chores and like clean out his fireplace and he kind of helped her with that and told the guards that they weren't allowed to give her any more dumb things like that to do. That was really sweet and obviously with the three tasks that she was given, he believed in her and helped her out with pretty much all of them. There was a little bit of him in each of them, which I really loved. That was probably one of the main reasons I started rooting for him because in the first one where it was that like worm creature that she needed to defeat, which also I feel like all of these tasks were very well thought out. Usually trial scenes or anything like this, I get like a little bit annoyed with because I feel like every book has them, but these were all very clever and I enjoyed all of them. So the worm maze thing was really well done, but I loved that he was the only person in the whole place that bet on her and believed that she could do it. And it was really cool how she ended up pulling it off and kind of surprising everyone. But that was really cool. The second task with those three doors and her having to read things and figure out which door to pick. Also, this is like a little side comment, but I kind of really liked how she didn't know how to read. Obviously, it's because of where she was raised, but I feel like that's a cool little tidbit that made her more like normal and not like this super like idolized character kind of like not like she's super special she's great at everything it's like she did have weaknesses and there's things that she needs to work on and I really liked seeing that throughout the book but back to the second task I really love that the little tattoo that they had to you know symbolize their relationship I love that through that he was able to help her choose the right door and that was really cool. I feel like that whole scene, I was, my heart was beating really fast. I figured that she would survive because there was a lot of book left, but definitely stressful. And then the third task, which was horrible that she had to go up and kill three people. That's absolutely horrible. But with task three, I honestly, I thought there was going to be a way that she was going to get out of killing those people, but I feel like it was kind of good that she did end up killing those people which sounds horrible but I like the kind of darker tone throughout the book I feel like that fit that for sure and it was very smart for Tamlin I'm assuming he did it on purpose but to kind of let Feyre overhear certain things and to kind of tell her to eavesdrop basically on their conversations prior to all of this because that equipped her with so much knowledge for these trials and the fact that she knew that she could stab him and he wouldn't die because of his stone heart or whatever they called it that was so clever I really thought that was a cool twist that she still was able to kill him and complete the trials and I really enjoyed that but the whole riddle part of all of this I thought it was going to be such a like complex answer, but the fact that the answer was love, I felt like was a little bit cheesy. So I kind of wish it was a different riddle or there was like a little bit of a different outcome to all of that. But I did like the way it ended with that big fight scene and Reese helping her again with that, or at least fighting and the ending where I'm not even sure if I remember it right, but I think you know, it seemed like she died, but I'm pretty sure she's like a fairy now, right? So that was really cool too. I'm excited to see the ways that she changes. There's just so many cool twists and elements to the whole ending of this book that I really loved. And if any of you guys have read it, I would love for you guys to comment below your favorite parts or anything like that because I just need somebody to talk about this with because it's so good. Like I said, I loved this so much. I would love to talk to you guys about this. Please no spoilers. I'm still trying to read it. As soon as I'm done filming this, I'm going to go pick up A Court of Mist and Fury, I think is what the second one's called. If not, that's, you know, I'm still learning. I'm picking up whatever book two is as soon as I'm done with this video. So I'll be doing that. Remember to let me know in the comments if you guys would like me to do reviews for the rest of the books because I would really love to do them for you guys. But I want to know if you guys would even be interested. So make sure to comment that. Um, also like this video and please subscribe. I would really appreciate it and also turn on the notification bell so you know when I upload next. 
But thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in my next video.